Hey, this is Austin with Counterculture Farms. You already know we do things different around here. We're going to get some sheep talk at you today. They're all coming. Look at these good girls right back here. Ding, ding. In the corner. I'm moving some hot wire, so what that looks like is this strand right here keeps the sheep in. There are these posts. If you're new to all this, it goes through here. One strand, it keeps them in. Got this reel right here. That reels it up, it's like a big fishing reel. Anyways, the sheep are all coming right now. Um, they're going to a new paddock. This way, we keep them from being way too wormy. Parasites are really bad with small ruminants over here in East Texas because it's so wet. Uh, goats, major issue, they're a lot harder. Got some of those too, we'll talk later about that. Anyways, that's why we're moving the sheep. Look at these good girls. Hey, mamas. So, when you uh, move sheep all the time, they are ready to move. Any livestock, really. Hold on one sec. Let's get these uh, dogs coming up. Sorry, here they are. Oh, Onyx, lay down. Lay down. So got these pups coming up as you're probably already gonna ask why are they dragging a little tire that's a little tire off of a uh, mower so uh, let me turn this around and I'll show you so they got a chain on with the tire that's so that whenever they go under or over the hot wire uh, it, it shocks them so that they stop getting out they're puppies they're training and I'd much rather them have that on for a month or two to learn the hot wire than them getting run over in the road because these dogs want to run. They want to get out, expand their perimeter. It's just in their blood. Uh, they want to get out and protect these sheep. So the sheep right now are walking off to this line. Onyx, load up. So let's get up here a little bit closer and see these sheep. So why are we doing this? Why do we have multiple species out here instead of just cows? Well, what does nature do? It doesn't just have one animal running around. Diversity, keyword for today. You gotta have diversity if you want healthy forage, healthy soil, healthy life. So all these girls are pregnant. Well, most of them. Uh, there are some ewes in here, which is just the older sheep. That's a female. And then there are ewe lambs, which were born in the spring and hopefully should be bred back already. Um, we got these from a guy that was doing a long-term breeding program where he bred in rams that he raised up every year and did line breeding. So every time he had rams come up in the spring, he bred them back in the fall. They are on the move today. He bred them back in the fall. Uh, and then he just sold the rams and then he did that over and over so that he'd start really settling some genetics. Uh, he was doing some things that maybe I didn't like so much, but now that I have my own flock, I can do it exactly how I want. So we don't feed one lick of grain. We hadn't even put hay out for these girls. We're in the middle of December, a week from Christmas. And these girls hadn't had one lick of hay. That's right, girls. That's all my pretty girls out there. I mean, that is awesome. So our cows have been on hay. They actually have already grazed all this. But you see what the sheep are doing. You don't have to spray blackberry briar. You don't have to spray it. The sheep are eating it. Why would we spray poison on it and kill it when it'll feed something? Get you some sheep, folks. Screw Roundup. Throw that shit in the trash. Look how happy they are. Now they just got moved into here. They were in the other one two days. I'm keeping them on about a two or three day rotation. Uh, gotta keep them moving pretty quick because they start getting wormy. See this one right in the front? Right here, she's a little bit more hollow than the rest. Now that could be for a number of reasons. Um, but probably they're eating too low to the ground and picking up too many parasites. She could be older too. I have some older ewes in here that are uh, 
definitely not doing as well as the two and three year olds. That's okay. So we sell these as a, a meat product. We sell it as finished lamb, grass-fed and finished. Uh, we do no grains. You know, we uh, I like to say that you know it's better than doing organic because we don't use any of the sprays that they allow. Uh, there's some controversy in saying that. So, uh, anyways, my claim is just hey, we don't do any herbicides or pesticides. We don't we don't do any of it, whether it's allowed or not. Uh, we don't put it out here. It's just, in my opinion, another type of poison that they said that you could use that's less bad, less detrimental to human health. But anyways, what are we looking for whenever we select on these sheep? This right here is what we're selecting against. See the hairy coat, the woolly coat? Uh, these are hair sheep, which means they shed themselves. We do not, uh, we do not shear them. So they're more like their wild ancestors that were off in the woods. Uh, or in the pastures that would shed themselves whereas humans came along and they began shearing um, Anyways, I want these to be completely shed. We're off into winter and she hasn't shed her whole Summer coat yet, which is not great. It's not I guess terrible, but it is not what we are going for so uh, Her number is definitely listed. Um, she does I do not want to breed any of her rams back if she throws me a ram lamb I want to make sure that he gets cut, that he does not get to breed, because uh, I don't want the rest of the progeny, the children, the sheep children, the lambs, to have that tendency. I want them to be shed off just like 90% of these uh, by really midsummer at the latest. Um, most of these are cleaned up and they're starting to actually put their winter coat back on. Uh, some of them have it on already. You really just got to watch the animals, the ones that are responding quickest to environmental changes are the ones that are highest in hormonal function, okay? So when the weather changes, when it's getting cold, we get a cold snap, and the ones know first they start putting on their wool coat before the others, they are operating at their optimum level, um, high, high quality right there. So it just means everything in their systems are working right. Um, the ones that hold their coat, like the one over here I showed you, uh, she clearly is not functioning as well as some of the others. Uh, but she does look all right. See, another thing we're looking at is her tail right there. See how fat her tail is? Okay. Let's see. Fat tail. Now look at this skinny tail okay she is losing her her lamb is still on her she hadn't weaned her i guess and she is uh losing too much or she's an older you i'm not sure about that one exactly but she is clearly not holding on to all of her body fat through the winter she needs to gain some uh, all these are pregnant or should be and so when we calve uh when we lamb in the spring um you know, you got to keep a tab on all these so that you know, hey, she didn't do so hot. Don't keep her ram. Uh, she does not have a coat that you want. Don't keep that ram and breed it back. Sell it for meat or eat it yourself. But you see all this, you get the point. We got briar in here. Uh, some of this is a foot tall. Um, some of it's just patchy, just barely here. But these sheep are in here cleaning it up. No poisons. They're eating it, getting fat off it. Hadn't fed them a lick of hay all winter. Hopefully we don't, um, but it is early on. So we'll see what ends up happening. Well, hey, y'all got any more questions? Leave them in the post in the comments on the bottom. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to know. All things counterculture here. Take it easy, folks. Enjoy your weekend, and a Merry Christmas to you.